All right, so today we are going to talk about the area of a sector. Now, we already know the area of a circle is pi r squared, where the area of a sector is just a part of a circle. So if this was my circle, which I know it's poorly drawn, but you can picture it anyway. Let's say I have this piece of the circle. This shaded region is a sector, and that area is going to be a portion of the total area of the circle. So <clears throat> if we think back to the um, when we were finding the lengths of arcs, we were setting up a part to whole proportion. So we were starting with the part, how many degrees was the arc, and this time it'll be how many degrees is the sector, to how many degrees in a full circle, which we know is 360. And then that's going to be equal to part to whole again, but this time it will be part to whole with area. So how much area is in the part, the sector, to how much area is in the whole, which the area of the whole circle we can find by using pi r squared. So let's take a look at an example here. In both of these circles, the diameter is 12, which means the radius is 6, and the area of the circle is pi r squared, which means that this is 36 pi. So that's the area of both of these circles. Um, however, we want to find the area of the sectors. So I'm going to set up a part to whole proportion. So my part, how many degrees is this if it's a half circle? Well, it's half, so it's 180 degrees. Out of the whole number of degrees in a circle, which is 360. And then our part is what we're trying to find. We'd like to know the area of the sector. And we know the area of the full circle is 36 pi. So we're going to solve this equation. Now, one option you do have is you could simplify this fraction first to make your life a little bit easier. And then we could cross multiply and divide both sides by 2 to find out that the area of our sector is half of the area of our circle, which makes sense because it's a semicircle. It's a half of a circle. So that is our strategy. Now let's look at another example here. To look at the part, I need to know how many degrees we have. I see that it's a right angle. So that means the sector has 90 degrees out of the 360 in a circle. And I would like to know the area of that sector. And I do already know that the area of the full circle is 36 pi because um, that was the area we already calculated for both circles, right? Because they both have a diameter of 12. So if I solve this equation, I could cross multiply. When I cross multiply, be careful. Make sure that you don't multiply out the pi. So when I type that into my calculator, I just type 90 times 36 because I'm trying to find the exact area. And if I type in pi, I'm going to get a decimal. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 360. And I would like to know what this simplifies to. Again, I don't want to type pi into the calculator because it will give me a decimal. So I'm just going to type this part in, 3240 divided by 360. And I'm going to type math frac for fraction, right, um, into that calculator so that I'll get it back as a fraction, which is what I want. Now, in this case, it actually divides nice as an integer. So we get 9 pi, and that unit is meters squared. So finding the area of a sector is just setting up a proportion with the area of a circle. So let's look at this example. We know that the um, radius is 5, so I'm going to start by finding the area of that circle. So I'm going to do pi times 5 squared, which means the area of the circle is 25 pi. Now I can use that to set up the rest of my work. So 
I know that angle ADB is 30 degrees, and I know that arc AC is 110, which means that so is my central angle there. And so first it asks me for the area of sector AC. So that's this space right here. And when I take a look at this space, one thing I know is that the part for degrees is 110 out of the whole 360 degrees in a circle. We'd like to know the area of sector AC out of the full circle, which we know the area is 25 pi. So I can solve by cross multiplying. And when I do that, I get 2750 um, equals, sorry, pi equals 360 times the area of sector AC. <coughs> and now I'm going to divide both sides by 360. Again, don't forget when you type that into your calculator, only type in this part and say math fraction so that you get it as a fraction. And when we do that, we get 275 over 36. Now, I still have to keep the pi. I just don't want to type it into my calculator because it will get the calculator can't work in terms of pi. And that's inches squared. Now, if I type this into my calculator, I can find out the approximate value. So 275 divided by 36 times pi. And now I get that the approximate value is 23.998. And if I round to the nearest tenth, that would be 24.0 inches squared. Now, on this next example, it asks us to find the area of sector ABC. So I'm going to highlight that this is arc ABC. So this is sector ABC. So the area of this yellow shaded region is what we are trying to find. Now, there's a couple ways that I might do this. One way I might consider doing this is that area of the yellow sector, that's what's left um, on my, in my circle, right? So if I take the whole circle that I have, which is 25 pi, and I subtract away the green sector, which is 275 over 36 pi, then I will get the leftover space, right? That green area. Now, when I do that, I'm going to type that into my calculator. I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore the pi for a moment. And I'm just going to type 25 minus 275 over 36 math fraction. And that tells me I have 625 over 36 pi. So that's one way to get the exact answer here. And then my units would be still inches squared. And if I do that in my calculator, 625 divided by 36 times pi, I get 54.5 inches squared. Now, let's say you don't like that method. The other option that you have is you could just do it the traditional way. We just have to figure out how many degrees are in that yellow sector. So I could do 360 minus 110 to find out that there are 250 degrees. So now I can set up my part, 250, to my whole, which is 360. And then my part, which is the area of the sector that I want to find, to my whole, which is the area of the circle, which is 25 pi. And now I could cross multiply. 6250 pi equals 360 times the area of the sector. And notice when I divide by 360, this right here is going to reduce to be this right here. So we get the same answer, either method that we try. All right. Now let's take a look at an example that relies a little bit on our prior knowledge. This tells us that in circle O, angle BAC, the measure of that angle, is 30. We also know OC, the radius, is 8, so I can find the area of that circle by doing pi times r squared, which r squared is 8 squared, which is 64 pi. So my area of my circle is going to be 64 pi. And then 
I need to set up a proportion. The problem is the angle that I want to use is the angle of my sector, which is right here, right? This angle, which is the same as this arc, is the one that we're talking about. Now, 30 degrees is not going to be the angle of that sector. If you think back to our rules about inscribed angles, remember that this inscribed angle is half the size of this arc that it creates. So this arc is 60 degrees, and that's therefore so is the central angle. So when I go to set up my equation, I have my part is 60 degrees to my whole is 360. My part that I'm trying to solve for to my whole, which is 64 pi. And now I can solve. So I'm going to cross multiply. And I'm going to divide both sides by 360. Um, and when I do that, that simplifies to 32 thirds pi. And I'm going to put a unit on there, centimeters squared. So the area of the sector is 32 thirds pi. So that relies on your prior knowledge about angle rules in a circle. All right, one last question. We are going to do some more with area of shaded regions, but we've been doing a little bit, and I want to make sure you take a look at this. So in, this tells us we have an isosceles trapezoid, so that means those two sides are the same. <clears throat> it's inscribed in the circle. The diameter is 14 feet, so I'm going to write it like this, right? So that's half and half is 7. Make 14. And now, when I take a look at this and I'm trying to find the shaded region, if I could take the area of the semicircle and subtract the area of the trapezoid, I would get the area of the shaded region. So I need to find these different areas. So let's think about finding the area of the semicircle. So the semicircle is half the circle. So let's find the area of the circle. The circle is pi times r squared. So that's 49 pi. Now, if I set up a proportion, a semicircle is 180 degrees out of 360. And that means that the area of the semicircle to the total area of the circle looks like this. And really what we see when we cross multiply and solve is we see that we get 49 halves pi for our area of the semicircle. And for a lot of people, they don't even necessarily feel the need to set up the proportion when it's a semicircle because it's kind of intuitive. Half the circle should be half the area of the circle. So the full area is 49 pi, so the, the semicircle is 49 over 2 pi, right? So a lot of people don't even set up that proportion, but we could. And then we also need to find the area of the trapezoid. Now don't forget the area of a trapezoid is base 1 plus base 2 times height all over 2. So I do know my base 1 and my base 2 are 8 and 14. The problem is I don't know what my height is. Because don't forget that my height is not the slant height. It is always a perpendicular height, right? It's always an altitude. So when I take a look at this, I'm going to drop two altitudes. So I make a rectangle. And that tells me that this set part is 8, which means you could think about this two ways. 14 minus 8 is 6. So there's 6 left to be split evenly since it's isosceles as 3 and 3. Or you could think about it with this 7 right here, right? Like if there's 7 here um, and there's 6 left total, right? That's 3 and 3. So whichever way you would like to think about that. Um, and now when I take a look at this, I know that this right triangle is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So I know my height now. And if my height is 4, <coughs> Then I can add up 8 plus 14 times 4 divided by 2 and get my area of a trapezoid is 44. 
So I want to subtract my area of the semicircle, which was 49 over 2 pi, minus the area of my trapezoid, which was 44. And notice this question asks us for the exact area. So right now, the only way to combine these is to get them in the you know in like terms as decimals and to subtract but if we do that it's not exact so actually our answer uh, oh these is, this is in feet so feet squared is just this whole thing I can't combine them because they're not like terms I can't write them both as decimals and subtract because it won't be exact so my full answer is 49 over 2 pi minus 44 feet squared. All right, good luck.